Right, okay, this is just a, a quick, um, like, tutorial using uh, a photo slideshow on how to mod your Virgin Media Super Hub. Now, my modem um, actually stopped working a few days ago and I rang up Virgin Media and they sent me out this new Super Hub. Rang them up today to say it was rubbish, I just wanted a modem to carry on using my router. Um, they told me they don't do modems on their own anymore, they only do this super hub. The range on it is absolutely pathetic. Um, I don't live in a massive house. Uh, my old router used to quite easily reach into the garden. This one has struggles to reach into the next room. Um, looking on a few forums and things on online and it seems to be uh, the case that most people are complaining about this. So what I decided to do, I decided to crack it open and see uh, what's inside and see if I could change anything to improve the uh, Wi-Fi. So before I did that I looked around and I was going to go and uh, solder in two SMA, SMA connectors. Um, but I remembered I had two of these that I um, kind of uh, cannibalized off two old TP link routers. Now these antennas, I've never had a problem with them, um, I thought they were really good. I was saving them for a project, um, just never got around to using them, so I've decided to use them in this. Again, I mean, uh, you can use SMA connectors, it's, it's the same kind of principle and same, um, same kind of technique. So, took these two. Now, taking the router to pieces, you've got two torque screws on the bottom here and here, and they have to be removed, so you need a torque screwdriver. So go ahead and remove those and then uh, all around the sides here there's like little plastic clips and very carefully you have to prise it off and it does snap off um, but don't worry I mean I didn't break any clips uh, just take your time now here down in the middle you can't really see it's out of fo focus is another screw and that is actually a tamper proof torque screw so you would need one of those to take that out or to be perfectly honest the back actually goes back in quite easily without replacing this putting this back in so if you can, if you haven't got one um, you could actually get a uh, fine flathead screwdriver and work it into the side just to twist it and get it loose I have done that before um, before I actually got um, a tamper proof torque screw driver they are quite expensive to buy on their own as well uh, but that needs to be removed and once you've got that off oh this is the uh, stand as well uh, those two screws that you take off at the beginning there and there and then you've got these two clips here that need to be pushed in a little flathead screwdriver to push one side in and pull and then same with the other side and that comes completely off once you get the back off um, you see the uh, actual motherboard of the router itself and there's another four torque screws here, here and here and you would need the next size up torque screw screwdriver these ones are a little bit bigger also this front plate here that actually does not come off but you don't need to take it off it is actually uh, plastic riveted welded on so uh, the only way to take it off would be to actually uh, snap it off but again there's no need to do that so once you've got these screws removed okay sorry this one here these two can stay in place that one and that one can stay in place so you get the four in the four corners remove those this is the um, router motherboard actually taken out and you can see here there's like a laptop Wi-Fi card um, I think that is a good possibility where the problem is um, I've taken a note of the serial number and I'm going to have a look and see what kind of Wi-Fi card it is but even with these two antennas on um, it does improve the range quite a bit but not as much as I would have expected it to so anyway what you've got here is the two connectors similar to what you have on a laptop at the top of my head I can't remember what they're called now but like little push-in connectors and what I did Oh, before we get onto that, see, there's the two connectors. Now, what I did, I desoldered these two off these 
PCB board antennas here and again they're similar to what you get in a laptop they are actually rubbish I haven't seen a good one yet a PCB antenna yet um, but um, if you desolder them off here and here and save these wires I actually these are these um, little antennas are held on by probably what looks like some double sided sticky tape I didn't actually bother removing those I just left them in place so again I then went away and got my drill and actually drilled two holes with two antennas I believe I used an 8mm drill but obviously if you're going to use an SMA connector it would be smaller than that um, I drilled as far into the corners as I possibly could to keep the Wi-Fi adapters, uh, the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi antennas um, apart as much as I could. Um, this is a grill to actually let the heat escape from the actual uh, router motherboard, um, and you have to be really careful not to snap them, okay, uh, to keep it nice and neat. But um, once you put the antennas in they cover up quite a lot of the hole anyway it looks quite a neat job here is where I uh, soldered on the, the well soldered the two wires together the uh, connectors that I saved uh, when I desoldered them off the uh, PCB antenna boards and soldered them directly onto the um, Wi-Fi antennas um, here okay you have to be really really careful there's very very fine plastic sleeving protecting uh, the inner core of this wire if you keep your soldering iron on for too long it will start peeling back melting back and then you will have a short after you've done this it's a good idea to get a continuity tester out and uh, just give it a quick check and make sure they're not touching because if they are touching it's not going to work and you'll probably be even worse off than you were before now instead of putting heat shrink sleeving around those I actually got some hot glue and hot glued them to the inside of the case to hold them in place and also a little bit of hot glue on top just to insulate them I then went and put the uh, router back together again which is just a reversal of um, taking it apart um, I actually did put the um, tamper proof torque screw back in um, because I have got a screwdriver but to be quite honest with you um, if you don't put it back in it's it's no big deal and there it is put back together the antenna sticking out of the top this is another shot with the antennas in the top out coming out of the top and there's another shot the antennas going straight up now I have noticed a significant improvement with this um, I would say it increases the range threefold. Still not entirely happy with it. Uh, for two antennas on top of a router like this, I would have expected a little bit more range because uh, these are quite good antennas. Um, my, the TP Link router that uh, one of these were originally connected to is one that I used myself in the house and quite easily used to go out into the garden. Um, like I say I haven't got a massive house it's a pretty pathetic router I did ask them on the end of the phone this morning if there was going to be something like a firmware update um, he then turned around and asked me what a firmware update is he uh, didn't have a clue what I was talking about but if you're like me and you've got one of these and you've got no choice but to use it because again you've got to use Virgin Media's equipment especially the modem you can't buy a Virgin Media modem in the shops um, this is a good fix I'll keep looking into it if I can find any other ways to improve it I will um, but I hope this helps you